Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. In the next talk, we will discuss the development of calculus in India, mainly the work of the Kerala school. So, of course, I will not define what calculus is. I will describe uh, what is the work that the Indian mathematicians did and then you can see what aspects of uh, our understanding of calculus uh, this work sort of contributes to. Uh, but this work of the Kerala school did not start in a vacuum. So, there were various ideas which uh, preceded it. So, uh, the first half of today's talk will be to trace these ideas in the earlier tradition of Indian mathematics. So, how in the understand in their understanding of 0 and infinity, how in the understanding of irrationals and iterative approximations to them, particularly in their understanding of calculation of sign table, the use of second order differences, summation of infinite geometric series the notion of instantaneous velocity we developed in uh, the discussions in astronomy and of course, in calculation of surface area and volume of a sphere and in doing this summations of powers of integers. So, what was the work done from the time of Aryabhata to Narayana, uh, which preceded the work of the Kerala school that I will cover in the first half of today's talk. Then I will introduce the Kerala school and discuss some aspects of their work. Uh, the main discussion of the work of the Kerala school will be done in the next lecture. So, some of this will be repetition. So, the idea of 0 and even the idea of infinity seems to have been uh, fairly well established from fairly ancient times. This verse of uh, Ishavasi Upanishad has been quoted I think already, which uh, gives you an idea of uh, the notion of infinity that uh, the notion of 0 can be traced to Panini and the philosophical discussions in the Nyaya and the Baudha schools of philosophy. Pingalas Chandra Sutra introduced the symbol 0 during it uh, in some other combinatorial calculation. The mathematics of 0 of course, was discussed in detail almost in the way that we do today in the Brahmasputta Siddhanta of Brahmagupta. In the same set of 6 and 8 verses, Brahmagupta discusses the 6 operations with 0 as well as the operations with negative quantities also. Now, Bhaskaracharya tries to take this discussion further. Brahmagupta tried to define uh, a number divided by 0, he called it Tacheda. So, Bhaskaracharya calls this as Khara and he mentions and of course, says that this is Ananta, this is infinite and he again uh, describes this characteristic property of infinity that it remains unaltered even if many are added to it or taken away from it in terms which is similar to the uh, way it was discussed in the verse in Ishavasi Upanishad. So, Kaharo Bhavet Kena Bhaktascha Rashihi. So, Kahara is a number which is obtained when some number is divided by 0. So, for instance, I am Ananto 3 by 0 Rashihi Kahara Ityuchyate. So, this number is called Kahara and then he gives this verse Asmin Vikaraha so, which is very similar that there is no change in this Khara Rashi. Uh, in the same way as in the Ananta and Achyuta, all the Bhutaganas, when they are emanated from him and when they enter back him during the Srishti and the Laya, Pralaya Kala there is no change in change in the Ananta Rachyuta. In the same way, there is no change in the Kahara Rashi. This is very similar to the way the idea of infinity was uh, sort of implicit in the discussion of Ishavasi Upanishad Shanti Mantra. Now, Bhaskara does a little bit more. Uh, this was discussed in the lecture on Rilavati. Bhaskara says, Avikrita eva jnayaha tathaiva keno nidascha yutaha. That is, when you are doing a multiplication with 0, do not be in a hurry to cancel out and make it 0. Later on you may be dividing by 0. So, for that purpose it is better to keep showing it as it is. Uh, and then he gives one example. So, 
the example is Khenodhrita Dashachaka Khaguno Nijardha Yuk Nijardha Yuktaha Tribhishya Gunitaha Khahritaha Trisheshtihi. So, there is a problem what is the number which when multiplied by 0 being added to half of itself multiplied by 3 and divided by 0 amounts to 63. And of course, in his Vasana Bhaskara tries to uh, sort of put down the working and then he says doing this Bhakshyamana Viloma Vidhina you finally get the answer as 14 and finally he comments Asya Ganitasya Graha Ganite Mahanupyoga this kind of mathematics has much use in astronomy. So, the problem he is doing is 0 into x plus x, x by 2 into 3 by 0 is equal to 63. So, here Bhaskara is cancelling out the two zeros and obtaining x is equal to 14. So, he is not treating 0 by 0 as indeterminate, he is cancelling them out. And as you can see Bhaskara though he is being quite clever, he is saying that when 0 comes in you keep it as it is and he even realizes that this kind of mathematics has much to do in astronomy that the various situations you get a limit, you take the value of a shadow. So, that uh, tan 0, tan theta will come in that and tan 0 and uh, tan 90 degrees both have a uh, problem. So, in all these kinds of situations the kind of limits that you need to do have to be carefully done is what Bhaskara is saying, but he himself is not fully able to handle this. So, in Bija Ganita he is uh, giving an example and we see how Bhaskara is uh, finding it difficult to handle this. Kaha Swardha Sahito Rashihi Khaguno Vargito Yutaha Swapadabhyam Khabhattascha Jataha Panchadashochyata. This is a verse in Bija Ganita. So, 0 into x plus x by 2 whole square plus 2 into 0 into x plus x by 2 divided by 0 is equal to 15. And so, Bhaskara not being fully adept in actually working out different orders of 0 which are appearing here, he just cancels them out and that is of course, not something which we can uh, sort of justify today. Uh, he would have had to see different orders of uh, different ways in which the quantities are becoming 0, 0 squared and 0 alternated of equal footing. So, he is still not fully conversant with this mathematics of infinitesimals as you can see, but the idea is already there in his mind, but he is not able to fully put it into operation. We will later on see how the Kerala mathematicians are capable of keeping all different orders of magnitude and then take the limit right at the very end. So, they keep on keeping all the sums and everything and then go to the limit right at the very end. So, there will never be an error in what they will be doing. Now, we come to the understanding of irrationals and uh, iterative approximations for them. This goes back to Shulva Sutras, which has given an approximation for root 2 and also for pi. Now, a systematic algorithm for square root and cube root for the first time was given by Arya Bhatia, which was made possible because of the decimal place value system. Then Arya Bhatia has also given this value for pi and specifically mentions that it is asana, this is approximate. And uh, perhaps uh, the way Arya Bhatia arrived at this might be by uh, using circumscribing this circle by a square and then successively by octagon and a polygon of 16 sides etcetera, a method which is explained in Yukti Bhasha and Kriya Kramakari. There is of course, the other method which uh, was discussed in the context of Ganesh Devagya's commentary on uh, Leelavati, where he is talking of a a hexagon inscribed in a circle and then 12 sided polygon and then 24 sided polygon and so on. So, you estimate the uh, sides of the, uh, the uh, polygon and approximate the circumference of the circle by that also. But the Kriya Kramakari that is the Aryabhata tradition seems to be uh, inscribing the circle in a square and then an octagon then in a. Uh, so, this we will see towards the end of uh, the talk on proofs sometime. Now, the Aryabhata algorithm of course, they were not dealing with the, they had a place value notation, but for numbers below 1 what we today understand as the decimal notation was not adopted in India, it was discovered in the West Asian region. Now, what is done for a quantity which does not have an exact square root? The Aryabhata algorithm is of, of course, applicable. So, what is to be done? So, this was hinted in Aryabhatiya Bhashya of uh, Bhaskara in, at some level. But a specific statement of the way to proceed is in Sridhara Trishatika. He says you take the number d, which is not an exact square, 
multiply by a suitable power of 10 and a suitable square power of 10, take the square root and divide it by the square root of the power of 10. So, you get better and better values of the square root. This is like a decimal expansion, but still treating the quantity as ratio of 2 integers. So, Rashay Amula Dasya Ahatasya Vargena Kenachin Mahata Mulam Sheshena Vina Vivajet Guna Varga Mulena. This is the verse of Sridhara as to how to approximate non square quantities, how to obtain better and better. We of course, discussed the other method uh, of uh, obtaining better approximations to square root, the more sophisticated one solving the Varga Prakriti equation and that this Varga Prakriti equation and Bhavana can be specifically used for getting better approximation is explicitly mentioned in Narayana's uh, Ganita Kaumudi. I gave this example yesterday also in the talk on Narayana. So, this is about irrationals and uh, approximations to them. Now, comes the calculation of sign and how second order differences have been made use of in the calculation of sign. So, as you have already seen, uh, Indians are using the radius times the sign function as the j, that is the sign function. Now, you take some unit, so you take your circle, say that it is divided into 21600 minutes. So, 60 degrees and 60 minutes product is 21600 minutes. So, the circumference of the circle is measured as 21600 uh, 21, minutes and uh, you take the signs of arcs which are of length in steps of 225 minutes each. So, the quadrant will be covered by 24 r signs. So, this will all be done later in uh, more discussions on trigonometry. So, B j is r sin j h where j runs from 1 to 24 and h is equal to 225 minutes. So, r sin of 225, r sin of 450, r sin of 675 etcetera. Now, these are called the pinda jas or the tabulated jas 24 signs. Now, sign differences are b j plus 1 minus b j and second order sign differences are delta, the differences of these delta j plus 1 minus delta j. So, already at the time of Aryabhatiya, he had a verse which essentially gave this relation that the second order sign differences are actually proportional to the signs themselves. So, this is a, a difference variant of the differential equation for the sign function. You know that sign function satisfies d squared sin x by d x squared is minus sin x. So, essentially this is a difference variant of the. Now, this relation is implicit in the verse of Aryabhata. I think it was discussed at some length. Later on, Nilakant Somyaji makes this relation absolutely explicit in his commentary on Aryabhatiya. Aryabhata used the approximation that the first order sign difference he said was 225, uh, 224, second order sign difference was 223, and so this delta 1 minus delta 2, I am sorry, delta 1 is just 225 minutes, delta 2 is 224 minutes. So, he made this approximation that delta 1 minus delta 2 is 1 minute. He also assumed that B 1 is 225 minutes and he went and used this difference equation to calculate B 1, B 2, B 3, B 4. B 1 is assumed to be 225 and then you uh, remove this delta 1 minus delta 2 by saying that that is 1 minute. Uh, so, apparently this equation is dimensionally not correct that delta 1 minus delta 2 equal to 1 is sitting there. Okay. So, using this difference equation, the various signs were calculated. This is a much more sophisticated and simple way of calculating signs rather than using all those complicated uh, trigonometric formulae for half angle then going from uh, say the 30 degrees then to 15 degrees then to 7 and a half degrees. This is a much better direct way of. So, using this Aryabhata tabulated the signs. Now, what do you do about? Uh, so, this is for sign of 225, sign of 450 that is 3 degrees 45 minutes. 7 degrees 50 minutes etcetera, but what about sign of 5 degrees or what about sign of 3 degrees 46 minutes. So, you have to do interpolation. The first thing was to do linear interpolation, but the Brahma Gupta soon enough came up with the, the second order interpolation formula for finding sign values for in between values. Brahma Gupta gave a sign table in basis of 900 minutes that is sign of 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45, 60 and 90 only 5 sign values he gave and then said calculate all other sign values by interpolation, but he gave such a beautiful interpolation formula 
that the value comes out to be fairly accurate. This is in his Khanda Khadiyaka, not in his Brahmasputta Siddhanta, this is in his later Karana work or the manual work Khanda Khadiyaka. So, Brahma Gupta is giving these words, we just see the relation that he is giving. So, R sin J H is one of these values 225, 450, 675 minutes etcetera, for any value beyond this, in between this. So, he says you start with approximate it first by B j itself, then usually you would have just said epsilon times R sin cosine j h that will give you the first kind of term. He has given two terms, this is today known as the Newton Stirling interpolation formula to the second order. So, this is a prescription using this even you have a sign table of 15 degrees only, the sign of most of the angles came out to be good enough for the purposes of astronomy. Now, we come to infinite geometric series. The finite geometric series goes back to Pingala's Chandra Sutra itself. We saw how he is summing this series. Mahaviracharya gives the sum of a general geometric uh, uh, finite series like that. It is in the Jaina literature that uh, the sum of an infinite geometric series is mentioned. Of course, this result is well known. It forms the basis of one of the calculation in Archimedes work on the cylinder and cone. <coughs> so, in history of mathematics, infinite geometric series were summed, they were summed in some peculiar way in Archimedes. So, Veera Sena in his commentary Dhavala on Shatkandagama has given this uh, explicit, uh, he uses this in evaluating the volume of the frustrum of a cone. We will later on see how the Kerala mathematicians interpret a relation like this, uh, how do they understand. Then comes the uh, idea of instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity occurs in astronomy very naturally, especially in considering the motion of a fast moving and whose pace is changing constantly object such as the moon, whose motion is fairly irregular. <coughs> so, what is done in astronomy is first you always calculate the mean position. So, assume a constant angular velocity, calculate the mean longitude, to that you add what is called the equation of center in today's astronomy. It was called Mandaphala by Indian astronomers. To the first order of approximation, this Mandaphala is always proportional to the R sin of the mean longitude. So, it is of something like, so if lambda is the longitude, it is something like This is just a uh, caricatured way of saying. Now, when the longitude of is changing with this time dependence, if you want to calculate the speed or gati or velocity, obviously you will need to know the derivative of the sin function at uh, any instant, if you want to go to the idea of instantaneous velocity. So, to start with in Bhaskara 1. Uh, in his uh, Mahabhaskariya gave an approximate formula based upon the signs were as you saw, the signs were tabulated in units of this. So, you just subtract the tabular signs around the longitude of the lambda that you are considering. So, use the sign differences. So, this was the first approximation to the velocity and Bhaskara later on immediately saw the limitations of this, because the tabular signs change only when you cross 225 or 450. So, it appears as if there is a jump occurring in the velocity of the object. So, obviously, it is not something very physical. Now, the expression for true velocity sputa mandagati in terms of r cosine, which was called the kotijya, uh, appears first in the Lagumanasa Munjala written around 932 and there is another Arya Bhatta who has written a Maha Siddhanta in 950. So, Koti Bhalagni Bhuktihi Gajya Bhakta, Gajya is same as Trijya, Ga is for 3, Kala Adi Bhalam, Kala is for the degree minutes of an angle. So, basically the mean daily motion, uh, Koti Bhala multiplied by the mean daily motion. So, omega times cos omega t. So, this is roughly the correction that you have to put for the velocity of the planet. 
Now, this is discussed much more systematically in Bhaskara, who explains the importance of instantaneous velocity in astronomy. He calls it Tatkaliki Gati. So, in Siddhanta Shiromani, Bhaskara discusses this that he emphasizes that you have to do this instantaneous velocity, especially in the case of moon. So, it is not good enough to take the velocity of moon to be the differences of the longitude of today and the longitude of tomorrow. That will be the average daily velocity of moon. You have to know its velocity which is changing at every instant of time. Samipa tithyanta samipa chalanam vidhostu tat kala jayaiva yujyate vidho is the moon. For him the velocity you have to take especially when you want to calculate the time of onset of a tithi or the time uh, to be elapsed for going to the next tithi. So, the argument given Bhaskara as you know has written this vasana commentary on his uh, Siddhanta Shiromani. So, where he extensively explains fact uh, one of the extremely beautiful documents which explains all the principles of astronomy. I mean prior to Yukti Bhasha this is in fact uh, one of the best texts to understand how Indians argued out various principles in astronomy. The Vasana commentary of Bhaskara on his Siddhanta Shiromani. Tatkalikya bhuktya chandrasya vishishtam prayojanam. That is why uh, it is being said that you should do that. Yat kalikaha chandraha tasmat kalad gatova gamyova yadasannaha tithyantaha tada tatkalikya gatya tithi sadhanam kattum yujyate. So, in order to find out, as I said, when the beginning of the next tithi arises or how much time has elapsed since the previous tithi it is best to do the calculation with the velocity of the moon at that point. Yadatu duratara sthityanto durachalanam va chandrasya tadadhyaya sthulaya kattam yujyate. When the start of the tithi is far away that is when the amount is large enough you can use a more uh, approximate calculation. Yataha chandra gati hi mahatvat pratikshanam sama na bhavati. The velocity of moon is not the same at every instant, it keeps changing every instant. So, there is a very clear physical understanding of the notion of instantaneous velocity and for the sine function they have also arrived at the uh, formula for the instantaneous velocity in terms of the cosine function. Again another principle of calculus that the, when some quantity is a maximum its derivative vanishes. This is implicit in the kind of discussions that Bhaskara does. So, here he is talking of the velocity correction it vanishes when the equation of center is maximum. So, this is again in the Siddhanta Shiromani and that the derivative has to change sign when something becomes a maximum the rate of change of that quantity changes from positive to negative and it becomes 0 at some point all this is explicit in Bhaskara's commentary of uh, this uh, principle. Grahasya gatherva palabhava sthanam eva dhanarana sandhihi that the velocity correction moves from positive to negative when the equation of center when the correction is maximum. So, that is the kind of uh, principle that Bhaskara is talking. So, when you take your astronomy seriously there is no way in which the principles of instantaneous velocity and related notions uh, they will have to appear in your calculations and discussion. Finally, the area and volume of a sphere. So, here we should all know that Aryabhata gave a formula which was incorrect. He said that the product of the area of the great circle by its square root is the volume of a uh, sphere. <coughs> the R cubed factor is right, but the co coefficient is not correct. Uh, it is understood that in the way Sridhara and others between the time of Aryabhata and Bhaskara used this formula. They were perhaps aware of 4 pi by 3 as the kind of factor. Their pi values have, are inferred by assuming that they are giving the volume of a sphere as 4 by 3, 4 pi by 3 are cubed. But it is Bhaskara too in 1150 in Indian tradition he is giving an explicit correct statement for the surface area and the volume of a sphere. So, all these arguments that Indian tradition was influenced by Greek and we borrowed this and that will become very suspicious when even a basic quantity like the volume and surface of the sphere which was well known uh, by the time of Archimedes they were not uh, borrowed by the Indians. <coughs> so, 
So, in a circle, the circumference multiplied by one fourth the, the diameter is the area, which multiplied by four is its surface area going around like it like a net around a ball. This surface area multiplied by the diameter and divided by six is the volume of the sphere. So, this is the verse in Lilavati, which was discussed in the class on Lilavati. Vrittakshetre paridhi gunita vyasa padaha phalam yat chunnam vedai rupari paritaha kanduka siyeva jalam. So, this is the 4 pi r squared. Volas yaivam tadapicha phalam prishtajam vyasa nignam shadbhir bhaktam bhavati niyatam gola garbhe janakyam. This is for the volume. Now, in the vasana commentary on Siddhanta Shiromani, uh, Bhaskara tries to give a argument. Uh, for this both the formula a kind of a proof. I think the proof for the volume was both the proofs were summarized in the lecture, we will just recall it a little bit in the lecture on Lilavati. The proof for the volume of a sphere involved thinking of the surface of the sphere being covered by various pyramids which have their vertex at the center of the sphere and assume that the volume of the sphere is approximated by the sum of the volumes of the pyramids. And so, in the limit you will just get it, it to be one third times radius times the surface area of the sphere. So, that is how the volume of the sphere is obtained. This is very similar to the, so for both the area of a circle you think of it as being covered by triangles like this and for the volume of a pyramid you, uh, for the volume of a sphere you think of it as being covered by pyramids like this, you will get the correct value of the volume of the sphere or the area of a circle. In fact, this kind of an argument is even reproduced in Nilakantha's uh, Arya Bhatiya Bhashya. So, it is considered a valid argument for estimating the volume of a sphere. Now, as regards the surface area of a sphere, Bhaskara says that uh, we have to give an argument especially for those who are unable to comprehend the result straight away. And so, he gives a argument which is essentially it was summarized in the lecture there, but uh, just to recollect this because this point may be important. So, Bhaskara what he is doing is, he is considering the northern hemisphere of the sphere and uh, of course, the circumference is 21600 minutes. Then correspondingly with Aryabhata's value of pi, the radius turns out to be 3438 minutes, right. If you take this circumference to be 21600 minutes, Aryabhata's value is 3.1416. So, so, you take twice pi here. So, this will come out to be 3, 4, 3, 8 minutes. So, for the radius whenever you use 3, 4, 3, 8 minutes, it means you are using roughly Aryabhata's value of pi. <coughs> now, so you draw circles parallel to the equator and so divide the sphere into various strips like this. And cut this strip and stretch out its area. So, each of them will look like a trapezium and the height of that trapezium, uh, the radius of that uh, each of those circles will be the r signs at the corresponding angle. The height of the trapezium will be constant, it is, it is just 1 by 24th of the uh, arc length from top to bottom. So, you have this a j, the area of the j trapezium written the Top, up, top side and bottom side by 2 times the height 25 to 25 minutes times c by r. c by r is the ratio to get at the radius at the appropriate level. <coughs> so, the surface area of the sphere is estimated to be this. Now, Bhaskara says he will do a numerical summation of these r signs. So, Bhaskara has a sign table b1, b1, b2 are all as I said this is bj. So, b1 is sign of so, r sin of 225 minutes, where the radius is 3438. So, Bhaskara says, let me just numerically sum these signs. So, once he numerically sums these signs, he gets a value like this using his own sign table. So, he will get a value like this. It is roughly 3437.39 squared. So, Bhaskara says, of course, do not you see that this is r squared equal to 3438 squared and therefore, I have proved that the surface area is twice the circumference times the radius. Now, of course, uh, the grossness is there of approximation in deriving it. It is not that Bhaskara was not aware of the grossness of the thing. If you go back to his statement, 
ekaikam malayakaram chetram tani chatur vimshati so divide this into 24 steps bahujya pakshe bahuni syu so if you want greater accuracy you can divide the upper hemisphere into as many bits as you want so it's not that he is not aware of the fact that he is making an approximation but he is an appro making an approximation to convince you that this is the result he knows the result and he is making an approximation to so he is doing a numerical integration to uh, enable you obviously uh, so if you want to be serious about this argument you need a more uh, sophisticated argument so this uh, is indeed the kind of approach given in yukti bhasha where the circumference of the circle is divided into a large number n of arc bits and then yukti bhasha it's a, it's like doing the integral sin theta d theta as cos theta but yukti bhasha uses the relation between r signs and the second order r sign differences to straight away evaluate that sum uh, in the limit so lastly about the development of calculus in the pre kerala era the topic we want So it will be the minutes are the the linear units now are minutes. So surface minutes squared and minutes cube will be the corresponding one. So they have a separate area units and volume units which are given in the first chapter, the Paribhasha Prakarana of Lilavati. But whenever you are dealing with circle, the circumference etc are measured in minutes of uh, the circumference. So again the standard results which we will keep see, seeing in perhaps the next lecture and the lecture after let us see 1 to n is n into n plus 1 by 2 uh, 1 square plus 2 square plus etc n squared is n into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 by 6 then the sum of the cubes these two results were well known in the Greek literature also this cube perhaps is not known outside India in this there in Aryabhata's uh, uh, book 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus n squared then this repeated summation of this sum of 1 to n is n into n plus 1 by 2 what is sum of n into n plus 1 by 2 that is what is 1 into 2 by 2 2 into 3 by 2 etc n into n plus 1 by 2 this is n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 by 6 so all these are there in aryabhatiya now as was emphasized in the lecture on uh, uh, ganita kaumudi it has a, a non trivial result which is an extension of the earlier result it's a extension which is a, of an arbitrary order so, Narayana gives this uh, expression for Vada Sankalita from which he works out the famous cow problem. So, what is Narayana Pandita's formula? So, call this summation of 1 to n as uh, Sankalita of order 1. The Sankalita of order r is given by sum of 1 to n of Sankalita of order r minus 1. And Narayana Pandita says that this is given by n into n plus 1 etc into n plus r divided by r plus 1 factorial or if you write it in extent so it will be like this now uh, it is important to realize that Narayan Pandita is not pulling this result out of a hat this result I perhaps told you while discussing the way Varaha Mihira is expressing the number of combinations of uh, n things uh, or thing selected from n, he gave a meru and what was Varaha Mihira's meru? For 18 C 4, what did Varaha Mihira say? He said write 1, 2, 3 etcetera up to 18 and in the next column you write some of this 3, I am sorry it starts with 1, then 3, then 6 etcetera and come up to this point and the next column will be 1, 4, 10 etc and come up to a column. So, sum, sum of sum, sum of sum of sum and the fourth sum and he showed you that the fourth sum gave you 18 C 4 and that is essentially Narayana Pandita's relation. So, there is really nothing new in Narayana Pandita's relation. He is writing it in an of course, in a as a formula of uh, order R. So, Varasankalita of order R, but I think this idea is fairly implicit uh, in Indian mathematics from fairly earlier times. Of course, this plays a crucial role in the development of calculus as we are going to see later. Now, we will say something about the Kerala school of astronomy. 
So, it is not that uh, astronomy started in Kerala with Madhava or any such thing. Kerala was fairly well known. Uh, Vararuchi, the author of the famous Chandra Vakyas, uh, is said to be from Kerala. Many scholars speculate, especially those from the Kerala region, that Aryabhata hailed from Kerala. Then, uh, it is well known that uh, there were many well known astronomers, mathematicians like Haridatta. He started the Parahita system of astronomy, which is famous in Kerala even now. Devacharya, Govinda Swami, who wrote a commentary on the Mahabhaskariya of uh, Bhaskara 1. Shankar Narayana, who wrote a commentary on the Lagu Bhaskariya Bhaskara 1. So, as you can see, the Aryabhatan tradition is popular in Kerala much prior to even the uh, Madhava period. And Uday Devakara, whose name came up in the context of Chakravala, that his commentary Sundari on Lagu Bhaskariya is where the uh, Jayadevas verses on Chakravala were cited. So, there have been various mathematicians, astronomers. There is a talk of a observatory in uh, I think Shankar Narayana's uh, commentary on Lagu Bhaskariya, he talks of the observatory in Mahodayapura. <coughs> but it was Madhava who started a new school of astronomy. He is said to hail from Sangama Grama near Ernakulam. Now, none of Madhava's works, and you can see Madhava is roughly a contemporary of Narayan Pandit, slightly junior contemporary. Uh, he is around till 1425 because of the dates available in Venvaro and Sputachandrapti, you can see something like that. None of his works are uh, available except two tracts, both deal with calculation of the instantaneous position of moon, uh, a better method for calculating the instant, it improves the Chandra Vakyas of Vararuchi and also it gives you uh, a way of calculating the longitude of the moon exactly at eight different points in a given day without doing any approximations. It is some interesting methodology. So, you can see that this Madhava must have been a great mathematical sort of manipulator and genius even by looking at Venvaru or Putachandrapti. Now, but what is more famous is for the various results on infinite series for pi, fast convergent transformed series for pi, the series for sin and cosine and many formulae for calculating sin and cosine, many approximations and all these are cite, uh, attributed to him. So, verses of Madhava are cited in later works. We will see the names of the later scholars. So, that is how he is much more famous. Madhava of course, is called Golavid by the later scholars that he was supposed to be a specialist on spherics. Parameshwara is a direct disciple of Madhava. He is in Vataseri, which is in the uh, point where the river Nila or what is called Bharatapula today meets the sea. His major works are Drigganita, Gola Deepika. Drigganita he is supposed to have started a new Drik system of uh, uh, astronomy, what we call as Drik Panchanga even today. And he wrote large number of commentaries on various earlier works. And he wrote a very detailed commentary on Govinda Swamin's commentary on Mahabhaskari, a super commentary called Siddhanta Deepika. So, Nilakantha says Parmeshwara carried out detailed observations for over 50 years and came up with his Dragganita system. Then comes Nilakanta Swamiyaji, who is perhaps the amongst the most well known uh, members of the Kerala school after Madhava. He is the student of Damodara, who was son of Parmeshwara. Nilakanta Swamiyaji is from Trikantiyur, which is near Tirur in uh, just border of Malapuram district. He is the most celebrated member of the Kerala school after Madhava. His major works are Tantra Sangraha, which is written in 1500, the commentary on Arya Bhatiya, small works called Gola Sara, Chandra Chaya, Ganita, Siddhanta Darpana, Jyotir Mimamsa, which is a discussion on the methodology of uh, astronomy, that what is a theory, what is observation, how are they to be related, how, what is the purpose for uh, discussing a Siddhanta text and all that. A very small tract called Grass Putana in a Vikshepa Vasana. So, apart from his mathematical acumen, Nilakantha, uh, he presents a major revision of the older planetary theory of the, uh, the Indian astronomy in general. And in that, he changes the formulation of the equation of center for the interior planets. And so, he comes up with a correct formulation of both the motion in latitude and the equation of center for interior planets, something which has not been done uh, either in Indian tradition 
or in European tradition or in Islamic tradition prior to his time. So, his was the major departure from the traditional models of astronomy. So, that is given in Tantra Sangha written in 1500. In his later works, he also discusses what is the model of planetary motion, geometrical model. So, where he speaks of the five planets Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn going around the mean sun which itself goes around the earth. So, he is famous for that also. But uh, the person whose work we are going to discuss in great detail is Jyeshtadeva, who is also a student of Damodara. So, he is a junior contemporary of Nilakanta. His main work is Yukti Bhasha or Ganita Yukti Bhasha, which is written in Malayalam. He has written a small astronomical tract called Dhritkarana. Now, Yukti Bhasha is of course, it deals with Yukti and is written in the Bhasha or the language that is spoken. And it gives the proofs for all the results on infinite series and all the astronomical results and procedures which are discussed in Tantra Sangraha. So, it is generally now uh, today it has been hailed as the first textbook of calculus. Okay. <laughs> Chitra Banu is a student of Nilakantha. This Ekamimshati Prashnotara is actually a generalization of the Sankramana method. So, given uh, two uh, sort of uh, combinations of A and B. Uh, how do you find A and B? So, this A ka vimshati, so you, there are 21 such possibilities. You give A plus B, A minus B, A square plus B square and A minus B and like that. So, A ka vimshati prashnotara is a work like that. Karanamrita is an astronomical manual. Shankara warrior is very famous, he is from Trikuda Veli because he rewrote what was given in Yukti Bhasha in Sanskrit. Uh, in the Kriyakramakari commentary, he has rewritten much of it in prose. And in the commentary called Yukti Deepika on Tantra Sangraha, he has rewritten it in words. And so, uh, this is something that is uh, accessible to the pan Indian tradition of mathematics and astronomy because Yukti Bhasha, a textbook, was available in Malayalam only. Achyuta Bishariti is a student of Jeshtha Deva and he is more well known as the teacher of the famous author of Narayana, Narayana Bhattathiri. Narayana Bhattathiri, as you know, was a great scholar of grammar also. So, Achyuta Bisharati has also written a book on grammar. He is actually from Tirur, <coughs> no Trikudaveli. His works are Sputa Nirnaya Tantra, Karanottama, Rashi Gola Sputa Niti, and a Malayalam commentary on Madhavas Venmaro. Now, till Achyuta Bisharati, the direct line from uh, Madhava is traceable and the activity con is continuing uh, with great intensity. It sort of peters out mostly by the political situation of Kerala, which uh, started uh, uh, with lot of internecine wars with the Dutch and the Portuguese uh, playing a major role. The Kerala school, there is a work called Karana Padhati by Putumana Somiyaji. Both his place and time are not fully established still. Of course, uh, in 1820s, Raja Shankar Varman uh, of Kadatanat uh, wrote a work called Sadratna Mala and uh, when this Charles Wish, uh, who sort of the amongst the first modern scholars to uh, write about the Kerala school in an article in 1835, uh, Raja Shankar Varman uh, was alive at that time. So, this much of the many of these four or five Kerala works were mentioned in the article of Wish, but the most of these works got published only in the later part of 20th century. So, few topics of the Kerala school we will discuss now, with the rest we will discuss in the next lecture on calculus. So, the first is the issue of irrationality of pi and the best discussion of this is found in the commentary of Nilakantha on Aryabhatiya. So, the verse of Aryabhata clearly says Ayutadvaya Vishkambhasya Asano Vritta Parinahaha. So, it is approximate value of the circumference when the diameter is 20,000, when the diameter is 20,000, 62,832 is an approximate value of the circumference. So, the value of pi is approximate. So, Nilakantha uh, in his detailed commentary of Aryabhatiya, while discussing the rule of square root, the algorithm for square root itself, he explains that the square roots are not quantities which can be fixed, that the procedure per square root of a non-square quantity is something that you can keep on carrying on for obtaining better and better approximations only. So, while describing that, he says, evam krutopi. So, even when you multiply a number by a large power of 10, 
calculate the square root and divide it by the square root of that power of 10. So, you keep doing that. Even Krutopi, asana meva mulam siyat, na punaha karani mulasya, tattvataha parichedaha kartum shakyahaiti abhipraha. So, the true value of a karani, a square root of a non square quantity, can never be determined. And then he goes on later on to say uh, in the same context that vakshyati cha ayutadvaya vishkambhasya asano vritta parinaha haiti. So, Aryabhata is later on going to say, this one Nilakanta is saying that uh, the uh, he is going to give you an approximate value of the circumference for a given value of diameter. Tatra vyasena paridhi jnane anumana paramparasyat. So, in order to calculate the circumference given the diameter, there has to be a series of inferences, a series of calculations you have to make. Tat karmanyapi muli karanasya antar bhava deva tasya asanatvam. Even while doing it, the square root operation keeps coming repeatedly and therefore, only the, the fact that the circumference can only be given approximately. Tat sarvam tadavasareva prachipa. So, we will speak about it at that time. So, when he comes to the Aryabhata's words, Nilakanta makes the clearest statement in Indian tradition of the irrationality of pi. So, basically he is saying why is Aryabhata giving only the approximate value? Because the exact value cannot be given by whatever unit you measure the diameter to be an integer in the same unit the circumference will not be an integer and this will be so however small a unit you may go to or whatever unit you measure the circumference to be an integer in the same unit the diameter will not be an integer the same will be so whatever unit you may go to that is the meaning of this the translation is also this is the translation of that. Now, another uh, important discussion by Nilakanta is on the infinite series, the geometric infinite series. As I said, the series itself is quite simple, fairly well known in history. Now, Nilakanta has provided a detailed discussion of this series. Uh, while doing something else, he is trying to find a approximate value uh, relation between the chord and the, uh, the uh, arc in a circle. So, he is saying chaturamsha parampara samudaya that is chaturamsha is 1 by 4 parampara samudaya that plus that square that to the power cubed etcetera. Kritsnopi tramsyatva meva apadhyate the entire samudaya this entire family of all powers of 1 by 4 added together will become one third. So, then the question is tatham punaha tavadeva vardhate tavad vardhate cha how can you assert that it will go only up to one third and how can you assert that it will reach one third. So, this is the question that uh, how do you understand an infinite series and he has posed it and then he tries to explain it the way that more or less the way we understand infinite series. So, he gives a sequence of results one third is one fourth plus one by four into three, one by four into three is one by four into four into one by four into four into three like that and so from this you can have a result like that one third minus sum of n terms in the series is 1 by 4 to the power n times one third. So, now this is the way we understand it today also the limit minus sum of n terms in the series will become smaller and smaller as n becomes larger and larger and so that is what essentially see Nilakanta is saying. Nilakanta then goes on to present the following crucial argument as we sum more terms the difference between one third and the sum of powers of 1 by 4 becomes extremely small, but never 0. Only when we take all the terms of the infinite series together do we obtain this equality. Incidentally, the relation Nilakantha was trying to do was something that is slightly better than chapa is equal to shara plus ja squared. So, this is shara, shara this is ja. So, it is just trying to obtain an approximation for the. So, this is chapa. So, this is ja, this is shara. <coughs> Next is the binomial series. Again, this is obtained by an iteration of an algebraic identity. So, consider three positive, it, it is obtained in a way because this is the context in which it appears in the astronomical context that is in the derivation of the Madhava series. So, let us try to see the binomial series in a complex way that it is formulated. Let a b c be 3 positive numbers b greater than c 
then you have an algebraic identity a into c by b is a minus b minus c by b. Now, the question is this b minus c by b can be replaced by b minus c by c if you have something called a shodhya pala. So, this a into b minus c by b can be written as a into b minus c by c minus a shodhya pala. Now, on the right hand side again a b minus c by b is appearing. So, for that again you can apply the shodhya pala replace it by b minus c by c. So, that is you can iterate this b minus c by b with this equation once again. You do it n times you get like this in the end you still have b minus c. So, this b minus c by b up to n terms will come like this and now they say this iteration process can be we can go on indefinitely and so you can write an infinite series. So, the crucial thing is that the condition for the convergence of this series is also noted and the fact that the way the, con the condition is understood. Evam muhu phalanayane kritepi yukti taha kwapi na samapti. So, phalanayana is using that shodhya pala going from b minus c by b to b minus c by c. So, even by muhu means repeatedly if you do this uh, iteration it will never stop in you can never say that it is going to stop. Tathapi yavad apeksham sukshmatam apadhya. So, what the obtain the kind of accuracy that you want. Paschatyan utpeksya, utpreksya, uh, the forget about the succeeding terms, phalanainam samapaniyam, you can stop the calculation. Iha uttara phalanam nyunatvantu, gunaharantare, gunakarat, nyuna, nyune eva syat. So, the succeeding terms will become smaller and smaller only if b minus c is less than c. So, basically the kind of series that they are talking about is the standard binomial series that we know. Lastly, the next thing that comes in Yukti Bhasha and Kriya Kamakri is the estimation of the sum of powers of integers and estimation of the repeated sums of integers. Both are crucial quantities, this will appear in our uh, derivation of the Madhava series for pi, this will appear in the derivation of the sin series and both these are extremely interesting estimates and they play a crucial role in the history of calculus the world over. So, both Yukti Bhasha and Kriya Kramakari which are works of early 16th century they are discussing this. These topics were discussed in Europe in early 17th and mostly in later mid half of 17th century. So, this sum 1 k 1 to the power k plus 2 to the power k plus n to the power k when n is large goes like n to the power k plus 1 by k plus 1 that is the dominant behavior rate of it for large n is proved both in Yukti Bhasha and Kriya Kramakari and this repeated summation it goes like n to the power k plus 1 by k plus 1 factorial for large n is also proved there. Of course, the second one can straight away be inferred from Narayana's Varasankalita formula, but Yukti Bhasha prefers to prove this again by mathematical induction which we will see in a later class. Again this one was well known for k is equal to 1, 2, 3, but for a general k it had to be proved by mathematical induction only. So, these are the four kinds of results of uh, uh, the Kerala mathematicians that I have discussed in this part, their understanding of pi, their understanding of convergence of infinite series, their understanding of binomial series and more than anything else their uh, estimate of integral powers of uh, some powers of sums of powers of integers and estimate of repeated sums of integers. So, all this will be used in the derivations that uh, Yukti Bhasha does of Madhava's results, but in the next class we will first discuss what are the results of Madhava uh, which we understand as uh, we think of him as a founder of calculus. So, let us see what are the kind of results that Madhava comes up with. So, that will be discussed in the next lecture on calculus. Thank you.